This video is sponsored by Acara. Apple announced at WWDC 21 a raft of new features for HomeKit in iOS 15, and one of those was HomeKit. Since then, we've been waiting for smart home manufacturers to announce support, and it looks like the first will arrive later this year. I've now got my hands on with two future HomeKit compatible smart locks, and I've been looking at them, testing out the features, and what HomeKey has to offer for HomeKit. So if you've not heard what Apple HomeKey is and what it could mean for your smart home, then continue watching this video to find out how to set it up, how it all works with both the iPhone and Apple Watch, and some of the additional features like loss mode, power reserve mode, and HomeKit guest access for smart locks. Hi and welcome. This is HomeKit Authority and my name is John. This channel is dedicated to everything HomeKit where we bring you the latest insights, honest reviews, and detailed tutorials like this one. So if you like what you see, then don't forget to check out the rest of the channel as you might find something that is useful and helps you out. And if you want to stick around and become part of this HomeKit community, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also the bell button. You can also check us out on our social media platforms that follow HomeKit, where we're constantly putting out the latest HomeKit information to keep you up to date. Now, before I get into the video, please know I have two HomeKit locks as a I've already mentioned that work with HomeKey. And the one featured in this video is the Acara A100 Zigbee. Acara kindly provide me this test unit and use it for demonstration of the HomeKit features. This is the international version of the A100 series that is found in China and Acara has not confirmed any launch dates internationally at this stage. Please keep an eye out on the car social media channels for full details. So let's start with what Apple Home Key is. Apple Home Key is a virtual key in the wallet app on iPhone or Apple Watch. This feature uses NFC very much in the same way when making a purchase using your device. So you do need an iPhone XS and above and for the Apple Watch a series four and beyond that support NFC. HomeKey has two modes for unlocking via your iPhone and Apple Watch. The first called Express Mode, where you don't have to unlock or authenticate your iPhone or Apple Watch. You simply place your iPhone or Apple Watch near the NFC reader on the lock and it opens up for you. This will make it more convenient and works pretty much in the same way as Express Transit Mode. The second, which offers a little bit more security and requires face ID or passcode, which adds the extra step of authentication. You also need a compatible smart lock that has NFC hardware built in. Whilst we have seen announcements from Acara in China and Shalage with the Enco Plus for North America, at the time of this video, which is February 2022, no other manufacturers have provided any updates of whether they're gonna support this feature. So while we do have smart locks on the market with built-in NFC, I'm not gonna speculate whether these will work with HomeKey or not. Of course, as always, once I hear anything i'll put it out on my social media channels so don't forget to follow us you have other features that are part of home key and the new home kit smart lock support if your phone or watch battery has died you can still unlock the door with power reserve feature this allows you to unlock your door for up to five hours after the red power reserve icon appears on the apple watch or iphone you can also disable the home key via find my if you lose your device and also grant guest access via home kit guest access feature and now let's take a deeper look at all those details and take you through how to use HomeKey. So let's start with setting up HomeKey with your smart lock in HomeKit. Setting up a compatible HomeKit smart lock that supports HomeKey is like setting up any other device. You simply head over to the app, you tap the plus sign, then tap add accessory and scan the HomeKit code. Then follow the on-screen instructions that involves adding it to a room. You can then choose the unlocking method. You either have the option of express mode or the option that requires face ID or passcode. If the lock supports HomeKit guest access, then you also get the options to enable a key code to get started. Once you've done all of that, you choose any automations that you want your lock to be in. And once completed, it will also add the own key to anyone that has access to your HomeKit home. If you have a Apple Watch as well, then you'll need to add this card and you open up the Apple Watch companion app on your iPhone, scroll down to wallet and Apple Pay, and then add the HomeKey to your Apple Watch. Let's now look at how you use HomeKey. Once you set up HomeKey, it will then be added to the wallet app on the iPhone and Apple Watch. But unlike other cards in the wallet app, 
if you've enabled express mode, you do not need to double click to bring up the key. In this part of the video, I'm going to show you both express mode and non-express mode so you get a full understanding. So let's start with express mode and iPhone. All you do is approach the lock, hold it over the NFC reader. The lock should then detect the device as a home key and will send the authentication information to open the lock. It's the same process with the Apple Watch. Again, approach the NFC reader with the Apple Watch and the lock will detect the Apple Watch as a home key installed. Installed. The wallet app will then send the authentication information to the lock and it will open up. Although express mode is less secure, it's no different in my opinion than having a physical key. Plus express mode makes no real difference on the Apple Watch as it does not need to authenticate once the watch is on the wrist. Now using it in non-express mode, if you've already enabled an express mode, you need to turn it off both within the wallet app on the iPhone and also within the iPhone companion app for Apple Watch. And you do this simply by toggling it off. Once you've toggled it off, using the iPhone is like using the device when you're paying for something. You double click and it brings up all your cards. You need to scroll to your home key. And then if you're using Face ID, in my case, you authenticate the device and the lock then unlocks. With the Apple Watch, again, you simply double click to bring up the key. Once you scroll to the relevant key, you then place it against the NFC reader and again it unlocks. In this case, you don't need to authenticate because the watch is already on your wrist. And like I've already said, I think express mode offers a lot more flexibility and speed when opening up the door, but some may prefer the authentication option and I think it's down to personal preference. So before we get into the rest of the video, I just want to point out our sponsor, Akara. Thank you very much for sponsoring this video. Akara is a leading smart home manufacturer of HomeKit compatible devices that are centered around a hub model. The hubs are available in various different models and they even produce indoor cameras that connect to Zigbee hubs. The devices that connect to the hubs that Akara sell are called child devices. And these range from motion and contact sensors and various different other devices. These devices are not only affordable, but based on my experience with them, they're good quality. I personally use a number of Akara devices in my home that I've actually bought myself. And as with all sponsors, I would not include them if I didn't value the brand and the products myself. Recently, Akara has committed to Matter, which is the new smart home standard that hopes to simplify the smart home. If you wanna learn more about Matter, there's a video coming above now which will tell you all about it. The update will be delivered to the Akara M2 and M1 hubs, and this will open up all the child devices to the Matter standard. Additionally, and welcome news is that Akara will launch its first Thread products in 2022, with the motion and contact sensors being the first. This move by Akara proves they are seeing the future of the smart home and moving with the times in terms of development and what the customer is actually looking for. Akara is available on Amazon in the US, Canada, UK, and EU, and and Apple stores in select countries, which is another testament to the Akara products. You can check out the range of Akara products via the links in the description below. And once again, thank you to Akara for sponsoring this video. So next up is lost mode. So if you've lost your iPhone or Apple Watch and your own key is on the device, then you don't need to worry as you can enable lost mode through Apple's Find My app. And this will disable including the home key. All you need to do is open up the Find My app and go to the device that you've lost. Scroll down to mark as lost or lost mode and select activate. You then follow the on-screen instructions if you want to add contact information to display your device or if you want to enter a custom message for the person that might find your device. Once you've done that, you then select activate. It then puts this device in lost mode and disables the home key. So if someone has found your iPhone or Apple Watch, and they actually know where you live, then you've protected at your security of your home. Then of course, if you find your device, you can then enable everything again and use the home key without any issues. Now looking at reserved battery mode. As we're starting to see a push by Apple to get us to carry more of our cards and access control and other important information on our iPhones, then what happens if you run out of juice on your device? Well, Apple has you covered. If your phone or Apple Watch battery has died, you can still unlock the door with the power reserve feature. This feature is not the same as low power mode that restricts features on the iPhone to save battery. This is where 
when the iPhone or Apple Watch has completely died. This feature works with transit travel cards, car key and home key. This allows you to unlock your door for up to five hours after the red power reserve icon appears on the Apple Watch or iPhone. It's worth pointing out that this mode will only work if express mode is enabled. So if you've disabled express mode, then it won't authenticate on the lock. To use it, you simply hold your device next to the NFC reader and it will open the lock as it would if it had power. So hopefully this will give you some peace of mind if you want to use home key, but I would still recommend having a spare key to hand just in case, as I do with my existing home kit smart lock that I have on my house. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is setting up access code controls for a guest within HomeKit. In the past, providing guest access to HomeKit has been problematic, but Apple is trying to address that with smart locks in particular. If your smart lock has a keypad and it's been enabled to work with HomeKit guest access, then in the Home app, you can set up access code for people who need temporary access to your home. So if a visitor, like the dog walker for instance, arrives, they simply punch in the code on the keypad to gain access. So. You first of all, open the Ohm app on your iPhone. You navigate to the lock and long press. You then tap manage access, then tap add guest. You give the guest a name. So in my case, I'm gonna say dog walker, then turn on the locks you want to have access to, tap change access code if you want to do that, and then tap done. It will then prompt you to share the access. And you can do this by a number of different ways using sharing sheet. You can also return to this screen to change the access code, turn off the access control for all locks or just some of the locks or remove the guests entirely. So when they want to use the access code, all they do is tap it into the keypad on the smart lock and it will allow them access to that particular door. So that's the end of the overview and hopefully you've got something out of it. For me, own key is a nice feature, but some will probably just prefer using geolocation automations to unlock the door. But again, I think it comes down to personal preference of what people want to get out of their smart home. But I do think HomeKit guest access is a great step forward, and it could certainly open up broader guest control within the Ohm app that users have been longing for. If you do have any questions or comments, then leave it in the comments section below, and I'll try and get back to you if I know the answer. If you like this video, then it'd be appreciated if you hit the like button. Finally, if you're not a subscriber and you like what you've seen today, then check out the rest of the channel, and it would greatly appreciate it if you subscribe and join our community. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon.